Hey everyone, welcome to Entreport Use Cases. My name is Sam and today we're going to be talking about how to streamline your sales process with Salesforce automation. So what we're talking about is eliminating all repetitive manual sales tasks by dropping them into an automated, repeatable system, thereby facilitating a smooth experience that can be tailored to any sales model. So there's a lot of key buzzy words in there. Let me just break this down really simply. The idea here is taking your sales model, whatever that is, you know, if you have a team of salespeople, if you're a solopreneur, same difference and putting that into an automated, repeatable system in Entreport. So why would you want to do this? The first reason is to close more sales, and I'm actually going to jump into the second reason, which is to boost sales team efficiency. The reason I put those two together is because by increasing your sales team efficiency, and again, if you're a solopreneur and it's just you and you are your sales team, this still applies. Because by increasing your efficiency and your sales team, you're going to be able to close more sales because you're going to be able to have more conversations. Right? If I have one salesperson who currently can only have two conversations a day and I automate the process and make it so they can have four conversations a day, there's more opportunity for sales. Okay, the third reason why is to reduce your sales cycle. So what we're talking about when we say sales cycle is the time between somebody becoming a lead and when they make a purchase, sort of between A and B, right? And if that sales process currently takes nine months, what we're hoping to do by automating this process and streamlining it is cutting that nine months into four months or into three months you get the idea. And then finally, this allows you to project future sales numbers. So if you sort of have a good idea of how many leads it takes to get a sale, how long that sales cycle is because it's all automated and repeatable, then you're gonna have an easier time projecting outwards into the future. Oh, you know, this year I'm on pace to do X amount of dollars in revenue, which is gonna help you make some business decisions. Okay, so what does this look like in the real world? Well, for a lot of companies, the sales process starts from some sort of a demonstration or a free consultation call or something like that if you're in the service business. Or if you're like Entreport, we do demos for most of our clients before they buy the software to show them what it can do, right? So a lead would come to your website and fill out a demo request form or a free consultation form or something like that requesting contact from you about your product or service. You probably have some sort of a thing where it says, hey, what day and time do you want to be called? So they fill that out. They get an email that says, hey, don't forget you've got your demo on Tuesday at three o'clock, right? Then you get a demo call from the sales rep, right? On that day at that time. The way that this happens is through a task, which is shown down here, right? So this is sort of what the sales rep experience is. So the sales rep just shows up to work one day. Again, if this is you, then you just wake up one day and check your tasks and boom, you've got a task to call the person who filled out this form on the day and time. So you make that phone call, that phone call happens, the demo, the free consultation, whatever. And then you choose some sort of a call outcome. Now, this is where it can get really complicated or really simple, depending on what your needs are, but you can have outcomes for, you know, they didn't pick up the phone, for example. That's a common one. A lot of people don't pick up the phone. And you can have that set off some automated system afterwards to follow up with those people more proactively. Hey, you missed your demo. Let's reschedule, things like that. Alternatively, you can have an outcome that says, hey, we did have that phone call and this is how it went. Now, that's going to be different for every business. But either way, you can have that trigger an email to the person that says, hey, thanks for talking to me today. Here's what we covered, you know, whatever that outcome calls for. So this is sort of a basic consultation demonstration kind of call. Um, we use this in our business. It works great. So uh, I encourage you to consider that if you're in that kind of a business model. Another example of this or a way you can use this, right? And again, the goal is to automate our Salesforce efforts. So another way you can automate your Salesforce efforts is by handling inbound sales. So what I'm talking about when I say inbound sales isn't necessarily people who just, you know, come to your website and buy right away, although you can obviously automate that as well. But I'm talking about people who show interest on their own and then you follow up proactively. So an example here would be a lead comes to your website and fills out some sort of a form. Maybe it's a survey, maybe it's a lead magnet form, and we've got a use case on lead magnets, so if you're not familiar with that term, go check that out. But either way, they fill out a form, right? And on that form, we can ask them sort of a question that's a qualifying question. We can ask them, um, you know, what type of business are you in if you're, if you're Entreport? And they might say, you know, I'm, uh, I'm in the service business and we know that that's a good fit for our product. So that might be option A and we follow up with them a certain way. In fact, maybe we show them a thank you page that's entirely different and built for service businesses. Alternatively, they could say, oh, I'm a software business. And we can show them a different version of that thank you page with different content specific to software businesses, right? You can imagine the imagery might be people sitting at computers as opposed to people out and about or people on the phone or whatever might fit uh, content wise with your audience. Additional to that, we're also measuring what answer they give and passing that information to our sales rep. 
right? So similar to up here, we might trigger a sales task to our rep to give them a call or to you if you're a solopreneur. We still do that down here. We say, hey, somebody filled out the form on our page. They're a hot lead, give them a call. But we'll give them this information as well. So for example, let's say your sales guy's name is Dan and we say, hey Dan, give Mike a call. He just filled out the form on our website and he's in the service business. He picked option A. So now Dan can go into that phone call knowing a little more about their business and giving them you know, more tailored content and more tailored conversation towards their needs specifically. The assumption here is that that's gonna raise conversion rate. I think it's a pretty fair assumption. Okay, so that's the idea here. Again, this is just two basic examples. There's a million different ways you can implement this in your business and I encourage you to think through them. If you have any questions about this or wanna read any more, we got tons of great info down below as well as other videos on similar topics. So I encourage you to check those out and we'll see you next time.